miracles of God. And any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God gives him. That God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Thank God, everybody, for the service. Elder, God bless you this morning. It's going to take us on into the one year, amen. Thank God for the praise team, Elder Sam, hitting those octaves this morning. I saw it, I saw I heard you, I heard you. Hitting those octaves, just showing out this morning, amen. God is good. We're going to talk about what happens when love hurts. Because we talk about love so much, but you know, sometimes love hurts. Sometimes it costs you something to love somebody. It, 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 it costs some suffering sometimes to love some people. Amen? And, and so we're going to talk about that. We're going to first talk about really quickly the God of alignment. Now I talked about three words that I'm focusing on this year. One is patience. Uh, uh, one is development. Amen? I, I, I'm talking to God about those things, but also we're talking about alignment as well. All right. And I'm going to talk about the God of alignment. Today I want to talk about Jesus. Amen. Amen. Why? Amen. We want to talk about us, don't we? Uh -huh. I want you to get past talk about me and my problem, what I'm going through. Let's talk about Jesus this morning. Amen. Let's talk about the God of alignment. Alignment is the proper positioning or state of adjustment of parts in relation to each other, to have them fully adjusted, putting right in line with each other. God is a God of order. He's a God of alignment. He, he makes sure that his words align with his actions. And I'm preaching about that for a little bit because we need to understand that sometimes we don't let our words align with our actions. That we say things with our mouth, but, but, but when it comes down to it, our actions don't line up with our words. Can I tell you this as well? Sometimes our actions don't even align with our belief system. Because we say we believe a thing, but yet we really don't act upon what we believe. We're not in alignment. Uh, but given that we were sinners, we needed a Savior then. Now, now, maybe you didn't, but I need a Savior. And God promised us a Savior. I'm going to go into some scriptures this morning. They'll be on the board, so if you can't keep up, they're on the board up there, guys. In Matthew 1 and 21, it says, She will bear a son, talking about Mary, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord has spoken by the prophet. And the prophet said, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call call his name Emmanuel and Emmanuel means God with us. That God is not just in heaven looking down on my situation. He is not just in the stratosphere looking at what goes on in my life. But I thank God that he's Emmanuel. That means he's God with me. Now I'm going to preach about me a little bit because I don't need a God in heaven when I'm going through things on earth. I need a God that's going to be right there with me. And I thank that God is not too big to be with me in my situation. That sometimes when, when things could have gone another way, God was in the car with me. He was in the house with me. He was at the hospital with me. I thank God that he is God with us. But because God is not a man that he should lie. Uh, he ain't a man he should lie. Uh, he had to do what he said he was going to do. And so he said, I'm going to send you forth a savior. So even if he wanted to change his mind, he said, I can't lie because I'm God. If I said it, it has to come to pass. I'm going to preach a little bit about this because this is why when you pray for something and God says it's already coming and God says it's going to happen, you might as well stop praying for that, those things because as soon as he said it, it's already put into motion. It's already happening because he's not a man that he should lie. Y'all yeah. better hear me. He, he had to do what he said he would do because his actions had to align with his word. If my word says it, then my actions uh, must align with that. See, why did we need Jesus to die? That's the question that we're here for. See, because we needed to be redeemed because of our sin. And because of our sin, we needed redemption from God. Amen. And let me tell you something real quick. None of us were innocent. Amen. Amen. I told somebody one time, they would say, you know, I'm trying to get right so I can go to church. And I said, I said who you think in there? Okay. <laughs> who, who you think in church? You think that the people 
people in church are the ones who have it all together and, and who are right and who have everything lined up and they're uh, uh, got everything together. No, 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 no. The people that are inside of here are the people who found out that they were not innocent and they were guilty and they come to the house of the Lord so they can be transformed to be more what God wants them to be. See, I don't go to church because I'm right. I go to church because I'm trying to get right.
those public service workers. You know, because thank God for us because we got those student loans. Right. <laughs> thank God, you know, it look good when you go back on there and they say, we forgiving all of them. Yeah. Give me that yeah. Not my fault. Give me. That's his favor, baby. He may have to bless everybody to bless me, but that's what's going to happen. I don't, I don't care about that. He can bless everybody to bless me, but it looks good when they say, you didn't pay it, but it's forgiven. Yeah. My mother-in-law. She always says, she said, look, whenever anything happened, government didn't give anybody anything, and they bless everybody, she always say, God bless everybody to bless me. Come on, man. Yeah. Say, look at God. Bless everybody just to get to me. Yeah. Look, 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 look. But, but he said, we die second death. In Revelation 21 and 8, it says, but as for the cowardly, those who did not want to stand for Christ, All right. the faithless, oh, the, the, the detestable, as for murderers and sexually immoral, sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. So not only here, but we have to face something on the other side. And but, but that's the one thing about sin, but something else about sin is that it brings slavery. When we were in sin, we were slaves to sin. Yeah. I want to do right, but you know, I was a slave to what I was into, you know. In Romans 6 and 16, it says, Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey? Right, that's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. Either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. You are serving who you choose to obey. Amen. And I, I had to really think about that because... Who do I obey? Yeah. Because I hear God speaking. Uh -huh. But you know, I'm gonna tell y'all something. Y'all want me to talk about the devil, but ain't the devil all the time. I've been preaching about this. Because it ain't the devil that wants me to do it. Not the devil that's talking about telling me to do stuff I should not be doing all the time. Most of the time. 90% of the time. It's me. Amen. I know y'all in the house of the Lord. We want to blame the devil everything. Me and sister so and so, we were talking and we were good, and the devil came up inside that thing. Baby, that was y'all. That's why nobody ain't changing. That's why nobody ain't being transformed because you blame the devil for what you did. Yeah. 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 You want to hear that one, bitch? Yeah. But see, that, that's why we transform because God ain't worried about the devil. He's defeated foe. That's right. He's trying to fix you. Trying to fix me. Uh, so get this, get this. He says, you know, if, if, if you are obedient to it, if you choose to obey it, that's who you're a slave to. This is, the, this is a disease of sin. The disease of sin. See, we do what we know is wrong because we are slaves to our desires. I want it. I want to do it. I'm going to do what I want to do. And because of that, we become slaves to what I want. You know, you know, I, I, I desire this. I'm, I'm going to go out and get it. Even Paul dealt with this. Yeah. Never know where I'm going. Even, even Paul dealt with this. Because Paul is writing in Romans 7, and he's talking about, you know, his life and talking about the struggle that's inside of him. He says, for I delight in the law of the Lord, verse 22, in my inner being, man, we're down deep inside of me. I delight in God's law. I want to be what God called me to be. I'm not sitting inside these services hearing the word of God and yeah. thinking, I don't want to do that. Somewhere on the inside of me, I want to be what God wants me to be. I know I'm wrong. I know I'm messed up. And I'm not just doing it to be doing this. Because I delight in God in the innermost parts of my being. Yeah. But I see in my members, in my body, another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. It don't dwell in hell. It does not dwell with the devil. It dwells inside of me. Oh, y'all better hear me. It's not the devil. It dwells in you. There is no good thing in the flesh. And so therefore, I hear God speaking. You hear me preaching right now. But there's also the law that's coming against what God says. It says, I know what the preacher is saying, but you want to do this. I know what the word of God says, but you desire this thing. And the Bible says, it's waiting war. Any of us been through war before? Yeah. 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 Ye
we ever fight. And y'all thought we were talking about demons. Y'all thought we were talking about devils. No, the war is against me. It's me versus me. It's me fighting my flesh. Cause I know what God wants for me. But there's another law inside my members. Paul was so messed up by this man. You know, Paul got the Holy Ghost. He got knocked off of his animal, up off his, his, his horse in, in, in the desert. And he saw God, and, and God did those great things. And so he, he was messed up. He said, because, Lord, what's going on? Because I'm saved. Because there's a law inside of me. And he said, oh, wretched man that I am. Who can save me from this body that's identified with sin and death? Somebody say, in steps Jesus. It says, what's going on inside of me? I despise my own behavior, but this only confirms my suspicion that I'm still a man in need of a savior. I don't just need him on Monday. I need him every day. There's a war going on inside of me, and I can't fight it by myself, but I thank God that in steps Jesus. Oh, how he loves us. Us. So I'm talking about love hurting, right? Yeah. To save us, Jesus had to be hurt. Somebody say hurt. hurt. We all know hurt, don't we? Yeah. I always say everybody get a turn, don't they? Yeah. Everybody get a turn to go through some hurt. Yeah. I, 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 in Bible study, I talk about pain. When I talk about fear, fear is the anticipation of pain. And I always tell you, you might as well not even fear because it's coming. Amen. Yes. You're going to feel pain in his body. You're going to feel pain in his heart. Right. You're going to feel pain in your mind. It's coming. Yes. Oh, you don't want to hear that this Sunday morning. Right. See, God still wanted the relationship with us that he had with Adam. Amen. Yeah. He wanted that, right? Yeah. That he walked yeah. with him in the cool of the day. Right. But, but because he's righteous, he cannot be associated with sin. Yeah. And our sin separated us from God. All right. It drove a wedge between me and God. Y'all don't believe it? You just, just keep on sinning and you see how God seems far away from you. Yeah. It's not because, y'all better hear me, that he left. It's because we left him. Right. That's why the more you sin, the easier it gets to sin over and over. Because that wedge is between y'all. And God said, no, no, no. You chose sin over me. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, you chose to obey it. So therefore, you were slave to those things. And, and, and to bring us back to him, he had to forgive us. Yeah. Right. But to forgive us, he's got to stay true to his word. Right. And he aligns his actions with his word. So, so how does God forgive sin and redeem his people? How do you do it? Hebrews 9 and 22 says, Indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. The King James says no remission of sins. So God said, I, I, I can't forgive it without blood. I started that with Adam. And that's the way it works. Yeah. So I cannot go back on what I said. You know, you gotta understand. Everything Jesus said, everything God says, it has to come to pass. Right. And he has to abide by his own rules. Right. That's right. Is that Bible? Yeah. He's not a man, he should lie. So I gotta abide by my own rules. And so, therefore, the blood of an animal would not do. Right. For we also learn in Hebrews that the blood of bull and goat, it only covered sin. That's right. It never washed it away. Right. It made you realize that you hurt somebody through your sin. And so, therefore, something had to pay. And because God did not want to kill you, he wants you to look on this animal and feel sorry for that animal that you must kill the animal because of what you did. Yeah. This is why the blood of bull and goat would not work. It only covers. Yeah. You know why? I eat animals. I ate one last night. I eat chicken. I eat cows. We, we eat animals. We eat fish. We eat all those things. And so therefore, when I kill an animal, I don't see myself. When I kill an animal, I don't identify with it being myself. So therefore, he had to give something that he loved for us. So when I give you this, he's going to look like you. He's going to 
experience what you experience. He gonna get hungry. He gonna get tired. He gonna get disappointed. He gonna be talked about. He's gonna be ridiculed. He gonna know what it's like to want to do something that's not right. Yeah. Yeah. That got real quiet. Come on. But that's Bible. That's it. The Bible says we don't have a high priest that cannot be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. For he was tempted in the same way that we were, yet without sin. Is that fine? Uh, and then Jesus wanted what I wanted. He wanted what you wanted. He was tempted in the same way, yet without sin. Amen. So, in this love story, give me y'all love story this morning, between God and man, somebody had to be hurt. Somebody had to be broken. That somebody, Jesus, his love for us was proven because he chose to be hurt for the sake of those that hurt other people. Amen. All right. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I ain't talking about your neighbor. Uh -huh. I'm talking about you. Amen. The Lord knows how we be. All people are hurt you in this world. They something else. We all talk about everybody else, but how many people have we hurt? All right. Yeah, Lord. If you don't want to say amen, I've hurt people in my life. Yeah. Yeah, I have. I've hurt people in my life. Maybe you never have. I, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I believe you hurt some people too. Yeah. Right. Intentionally and unintentionally. Yeah. 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 He said, you know, I chose to be hurt for those who hurt others. Yeah. Uh -huh. For those who hurt me. Mm -hmm. Oh, now, now we're talking, right? Amen. Who, who, who does that? Come on. Who can they sign for that? Mm -hmm. Now, I love my boys. Now, I love them. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna come try my best to help you, but I don't know if I'm gonna let my son die for you. That's why I ain't Jesus. That's why I ain't God. But thank God I ain't God. Y'all yeah. look at me crazy, y'all want to. How many of y'all give y'all son to somebody else? Y'all right. child for somebody else? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I tell the truth. Mm. <laughs> Isaiah 53 and 4 breaks it down so well. Surely he is born. Our griefs yes, yes. and carry our sorrows. Yes. What he is, yet we have seen him stricken, smitten by God. Y'all better hear me. Right. And afflicted going through. But he was pierced for our transgression. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, with his stripes, we are healed. Get this. He loved us so much. Those inner things that we ain't talking about that about. Uh -huh. We want to say, you know, I'm so saved and I got it together, but on the inside. On the inside. Right. I told y'all before, I spoke to you and I said, praise the Lord. But there's another phrase in my mind. Like, see, I love it. I love it. See, you 
will listen to you to write that. Wipe all of them out. He knew we needed a savior. 
with all power in his hand. He has the power to love us. He has the power to forgive us. He has the power to save us. He got the power to transform us. He got the power to empower us to do great things. And he's there forever. But I thank God he got up because I need him 